Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to set up a Minecraft server on a Raspberry Pi 5. The Minecraft server itself won't be a vanilla server, it will be using Forge so that we can have some nice cool mods on our server. Um, the mod in question that we're going to use is going to be Pixelmon. Uh, the tutorial assumes that you have a Raspberry Pi 5, that Pi 5 is connected via Ethernet, uh, although you can configure it via Wi-Fi to a network and that you have a micro SD card of around 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes. Um, so yes, let's crack on. First thing we need to do in this guide is go over to the RajiPi.com website and click on the software tab. From there, we need to download the RajiPi imager for Windows. Once that is downloaded, you will then need to install it, um, go through the usual admin permissions, etc. And it will then load this once you've completed. So what we need to do now under this Raspberry Pi device is pick the Raspberry Pi 5 board, the operating system. Now, because we want to try and keep this compact and have access to as much memory as we can get of the eight gigabytes that are on the board, we don't want the full 64-bit desktop Pi. So where we want to go is into Pi OS Other, and then we've got two options up the top here so we have the 64 bit there again so we can access all eight gigs of ram that's on the board and it doesn't have a desktop environment so it will run headless so if we choose that that's what we're after we then want to make sure that we have our device plugged in our micro sd card that we want to choose we can then select our mounted drive and click next it will now ask us if we want to add any customized settings. Uh, we do. We want to make our life a little bit easier for ourselves. So if we edit the settings, we want to set ourselves a host name, uh, a bit easier than having then to go into the machine and then or the server that we set up and then find out its IP address. And do we want to set a username or password? In this case, I have MC root. I've set a password. Uh, I said earlier, if you want to use wireless LAN, you can set a wireless LAN up here with your password. Uh, the services we want to enable SSH because we were going to want to SSH onto our headless server so we can do some configuration and then set any options. So what we then need to do once we're happy is click save. Uh, would you like to apply? Yes, we would. This will erase. Are you sure? Yes. And this will then start the writing process to our micro SD. Now this takes about three to five minutes depending on the size of your micro SD card. Uh, once it's finished writing everything, it will do a verification process. Once this is completed, what you will then need to do is take the micro SD card out of your laptop or the Windows desktop, pop it into the back of the Raspberry Pi, plug the Raspberry Pi Ethernet cable in, or don't plug it in if you've used a Wi-Fi, plug the power in, and turn the Raspberry Pi on. What will happen then is it will start up a couple of times, it should run a couple of times, normally about between 10 to 30 seconds each time, to then when it will finally restart and just stay powered on. And all it's doing is initializing itself and getting ready um, to be used. So I'm going to pause the video here while we wait for this to finish writing and then ver verify. And I'll join you back then when I plug my micro SD card back into my Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's done those reboots I've just talked about, and we can then access it via SSH. Okay, after a few reboots, I believe the Raspberry Pi 5 now is ready to go. So what we're going to need to do on our keyboard is press the Windows key, uh, type the letters CMD, which should offer you the Windows command prompt. Right-click on that and select Run Illustrator, because we are going to need to SSH onto our new Raspberry Pi so we can set some stuff up, add a user and create some groups. Right, so let's go SSH. Then we're going to need the name of the user that we created in the configuration when setting the Pi up. So in this case, MC root, that symbol, and then the name of the host, which is Minecraft Pi. Okay, so it's, now, it's been found. We want to add this to our known host. So we can type the word yes, type in our password, In my case, I've got to think I got it wrong there. Yeah, let's try one more time. There we go. And then let's see if we can get the opt directory. 
weak at, so there's nothing there. So here we go. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is run a admin command to add a folder, and we're gonna call the folder forge server. So sudo mkdir, which means make directory. Okay, let's do this. That's there now. And what I also want to do now is make a user and give them ownership over that folder. So again, we have a sudo command. So sudo add user and let's call them mcforge. And let's set a password for them. Okie dokie. Don't really care about any of that. They're now done. So now let's set the, let's change the group ownership, uh, chgrp, uh, mc forge, and then forge server. And then one more, sudo cho mc forge, forge server. Okay, so now we've done that, what we also need to do is to make sure that the Raspberry Pi is up to date. So what you can run again in while we're here is sudo apt and then update. And what that will do is it will go away and then check to see if there's any critical updates, etc. that you needed. Uh, we'll just wait for this to finish going through now very quickly. Still reading the package lists. 40 packages can be upgraded. Currently for this uh, tutorial, I'm not gonna do that, but what we do need to install um, is the latest JDK, which I think is version 17. So we're gonna need to type the following commands, sudo apt install uh, default JDK. Okay, that will go away, come back now. It's at 542 megabytes. We're gonna put a capital Y and hit enter. That's gonna go away now and download. Now this could take between, think, between three to five minutes depending on how fast your internet is. So what I'm gonna do is pause the video here just to save you a bit of wait time and I'll be back as soon as it's downloaded and installed. Okay, so that's all nicely downloaded. So the next step we need to do is get the mod and get the Minecraft Forge server installation. So at the beginning of the video, we talked about using Pixelmon. So for this tutorial, I'm going to download the Alpha 120.2 and put that into a folder I can access off my command prompt. And then I'm going to go to the Forge website up here. I'm already on 1.20, uh, so 1.20.2 and download the install there again to the same folder where I have downloaded Pixelmon 2. Uh, these links will be available in the description. So what I'm going to do now inside our command window is just X out of this so it closes it off. I'm going to change my directory to where the files are. And then I'm going to run a command then to copy these files to the Raspberry Pi. So we need this following command written there. Then the name of the file. So if you stop typing less than press tab, then in our case it will be mc root at Minecraft Pi, and then come out at the end. It should ask us for our password. And then we should see it transfer over. So that's the first one done. And we need to run the same command again then, this time for the Pixelmon file to the same destination. Again, not forgetting that comes to the end. Type in a password. And then it will copy over. So this might take a little bit of time. Uh, again, what I'll do is quickly pause the video here and I'll come back once it's finished uploading. Okay, that's finished uploading now. So what we need to do is go back onto the Raspberry Pi as the MC root user again. So we'll SSH back over. Type in our password. And then if I'll do an LS, we can see that the files are there. So we now need to copy those into the Forge server folder that we created at the beginning. 
So we're going to use this command. And then we're going to do the same for the other file, for the pixel on file. And then just to make sure that they're there, we're going to now pop over into the full server folder. And we can see that those files are in there. So this should be it now for what we want to do with the MC root user. So we're going to type exit and enter, and then we're going to reopen our SSH connections, but this time with MC forge user. And that's because they own the folder. So we'll log in. Okay. So we're now going to navigate over to the forge server again. You can see the files are currently in there. So now what we need to do is install the Forge server. So we need to type the following command, java space dash jar, then the name of the file. In this case, it'll be our Forge server dash dash install server and hit enter. Now this will install everything we need to go. As it's going now, uh, this may take a bit of time. Again, it's got to download a lot of different things from different places and do a bit of setup. So I'll pause the video here again and continue once it's finished downloading and installing. Okay, so that's now finished installing. It tells us we, if we wish to delete the installer, we can do. So let's just see what's in that directory right now. So we have the file which we want to get rid of. So let's run quick move command rm forge installation jar. go so that's now gone we have a run.sh a run.bat and a user arguments so for this we're going to do nano user gm.txt and as we can see in here there's nothing set yet so what we want to do is we want to copy this line highlighted here go down to this line here delete the hash, type in dash m x s 2500m. So that's basically saying the minimum amount of um, memory that this server can access is 2.5 gigabytes. And it's currently set to four gigabytes max. However, given that we've got eight gigabytes on the Pi and nothing else will be running on this Pi, uh, I generally tend to set that to seven just to give it as much as possible. So we can get as many people, maybe 10, 15 people using it locally. So once that's set, control X, and then we want to save. So we press Y and then press enter. And then to make sure that has saved, if we type cat space user, then Press our tab again to autocomplete. We can see there that the line has been set. So now that's set, the next thing to run, I believe, should be bash space run dot sh. Let's run this now. Okay, and that's running in the background. We'll expect some errors because certain things haven't been set yet. So here we go. We need to agree to the EULA. So if we type ls again, we should get a list of directories. And now we can see that we've got a mods folder, logs, libraries, configs, default configs, and an e uh, EULA text. So if we do again, nano eula dot text, all we need to do, come in here, and while you see the word false, delete that, type the word true, press control X again, Y, and then enter to save. And just to confirm that's been set, if we type cat eula.txt, we can see that's set. And while we're in here, we might as well move the pixel mod into the mods folder. So we'll run the following command. For server. Run that. Okay, so why hasn't that copied over? Let's have a quick look into the mods folder. It has, I just need to remove it. So let's it again. Uh, 
wait for this to finish. And it's gone. Okie dokie, so we set the Euler. Let's go back again. And now let's run bash run.sh again. Let's see what happens this time. Okay, just to wait for it to start running. There we go. Okay, so while this now starts running in the background, I'm just going to pause the video again, um, and then when it's up and running, I'll come back to you. Okay, so that's up and running now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to test that we can get onto the new server. So you're going to need to load up your Minecraft application. Um, it's going to be needing to run the version of the Forge that you're running. Then go to Multiplayer, and then Add Server. You can type the server name in. Um, so for example, Minecraft, and then the IP address, uh, point, say 144 or 142, and click Done. And then what that will do is we will add the connection here. You can see that it can connect and that everything is compatible. Again, if you don't use the same matching Forge server, then um, when you try to connect it, you'll see a big red X here. And then if we click play, we should hopefully see soon is us connecting. There we go. So user authentication, Minecraft player. And we are now in the server. So I can start jumping around and then going looking. I'm just going to disconnect from the server. And then once in disconnected, it's going to quickly pause and then show you how you can get hold of your IP. Uh, so you okay, that's me disconnected from the server. Uh, if you want to be able to find your IP address uh, to add into the Minecraft, applications you can connect to the server all you need to do is type if config press return and then it will give you a list of the ips that you have that you can connect to and that's it um, feel free then to just add any more mods or play with configurations that are inside the server and just uh, generally have fun um, i hope that you found this guide useful and uh, yes thank you much for your time bye